Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to another episode of our totally vanilla run of RimWorld with no expansions, no mods. That is meant to be kind of a tutorial-y kind of thing for people who are newer to RimWorld. In this episode, we need to rescue someone. We got a quest. Darcy, whose Vort sister, is being held captive by Andunista. Oh wait, no. Yeah, yeah. Prisoner held by Andunista, yes. Uh, we need to go and rescue Darcy. It's Vort's sister. We can't let her be. This is going to require us to go out onto the map. Uh, if we go, click this. This is where we live. This is our little blue house. This is us. Here's the prisoner camp. So it's not very far away, but we have a, one problem. We don't have any meals we could bring with us. Our people are going to have to go and eat while they're on the world map. And all we could do is bring maybe some raw potatoes or raw meat with us right now. Your people can uh, forage a little bit for food on the way, but that's probably not going to be enough to do it. We need something else. There's two, well, so first of all, if we were just cooking some regular meals, we could bring them with us. Um, if we, uh, ideally we'd have survival meals, which have basically unlimited shelf life. Well, they do, as long as they're not outside, they have unlimited shelf life. The other option is pemmican. Now we have to research pemmican and or survival meals. If you do have a tribal start, you actually start with the technology to make pemmican. Uh, otherwise, so pemmican is kind of like a, a, like a, like a beef jerky kind of thing, a little bit different, but that sort of thing. Uh, we could research that. We could also research survival meals, which is going to be somewhere right there. Package survival meals. Actually, it turns out they're the same amount of research amount, same amount of research number, in which case maybe, maybe we just go for survival meals. We are nearly done the microelectronics, but I think this is a priority. I'm going to switch the research to package survival meal. We don't lose our progress on microelectronics. The progress is still banked. So we're going to do that. Fob is sleeping. Oh, this, this became a prisoner room again. Why are you sleeping on the ground? Hold on. I'm going to force Fob to finish this event. There we go. So that this is now civilian room again. Sorry about that, Fob. My bad. We'll have the uh, the prisoner room in a more isolated block for maybe next time. Oh, yeah, the same thing keeps happening here. <laughs> oh, boy. There you go. That is a regular name. Okay, Ship to the Stars. Ship to the Stars, this is one of the ways that you can win RimWorld. There is an AI somewhere on the map way over here. So we are, we are here. Right over here, there's a landed ship. If we can make our way there... We can leave this planet. That is one of the ways you can you can quote unquote win RimWorld. There's a few different kind of victory conditions, end game things that you can aim for. Honestly, I've never been considered concerned with with winning with finishing that way. I've done it maybe a couple of times that you can build your own spaceship and leave, but mostly I just you know play until either I get tired or everybody dies. Oh, Fob's actually doing a little bit of crafting here. Interesting. Uh, so yeah, this is you know what? Should I just make this back room? No, I, I want these back rooms to be the, uh, you don't do a warden, who does it? There you go. I want the back room, or the, this middle room to be the prisoner room, because I don't care if they get disturbed the same way. A lot of times they're going to be awake anyway. Sky's actually idle. There's nothing for Sky to do. Nothing to haul, nothing to clean, really. Wow. I could give you, like, a really low construction job or something. Uh, maybe like grow or plant cut. Let me just reset you. No, still nothing. Still idle. I guess I could designate a little bit of mining. Uh, I'm worried about the overhead mountain stuff. If I go and show me the roofs over here, I don't want to mine under any of these dark spots because I don't want to generate any infestations. I think I'm right about that. I should probably double check the wiki. Or, you know, you can. It's an exercise left for the viewer. There you go. To confirm the, um where bugs might spawn. But there you go. I'll trim a little bit more mining and then Sky can do a little bit of busy work just for the moment. Okay, there we go. Mm -hmm. Oh, you're botching the harvest. Oh yeah, only a skill level five. So sometimes we botch and then we don't get all the crops, which is not ideal. Okay, Vort's working on researching survival meals. While that's happening, I'm going to go and set up a electric stove. A set up over here because we're need to cook the uh, the survival meal. I wonder if we even have the skill for that. Hold on. Whoa, 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 whoa. So that just occurred to me.
I mean, it takes eight units of work to do it. I don't know if it needs a particular skill level to do it. Because I don't think Pemmican does. Ooh. Ooh, I'm not sure. We might find out we actually can't cook survival meals. But yeah, the nice thing about them is they don't rot. Therefore, we don't have to worry about... Um, about things lasting as we go. Most of we don't have the raw food. There's technically a little way you can kind of leave, you can generate a bunch of uh, of nutrient paste meals. Um, when someone goes over here and gets a meal, if you quickly recruit them, they will drop it to the ground and you can forbid that meal. And you can keep that process going and they'll leave a big stack of nutrient paste meals on the ground that you could use and bring with you. Um, I don't know if there's anything else I can do to like kind of order up this thing. So we do have an electric stove and I could ask someone to start cooking. So there's basically simple, fine, and lavish meals. Uh, you can also force them to be vegetarian or carnivore, depending on... This is mostly if you have the ideology mod. Um, some people have different dietary restrictions. The other thing is, uh, normally a fine meal needs a little bit of vegetable and a little bit of meat. It's not really listed quite clearly, but usually it needs a, a mix of the two. Um, with the option to make fine vegetarian meals means you can make it 100% out of just vegetables or fine carnivore meals, you can make it 100% out of just meat uh, if for some reason you don't have a, a mix of food sources here. Yeah, see, that would be an example right there. If I recruited Sky, I could interrupt the meal and keep the, um, the nutrient paste meal around and bring that with me, but I don't want to do that. Plus, ideally, I want something that doesn't decay. Now, this trip is not very far, so things aren't actually going to decay very quickly. Now, one thing I'm not sure about, and I just realized, I think... Ooh, Honey has inspired recruitment. That's great, because the next time... Hang on, I'm going to turn off Sky's Wardening. I'm going to make sure it's Honey that does it. She will instantly and automatically recruit Paulo in one go, which is going to be lovely. As soon as it's time to do some recruiting with him. So again, there's that cooldown. So whenever it's up, she's going to go over and talk to him, and she should instantly recruit him. And was he a cook? Oh, yeah, he was a great cook. Oh, that's lovely. Definitely one I want. In fact, once we've got Paolo, I'm going to... No, we no longer need the Dutrit Paste Dispenser because we're going to get him to make proper meals for us. And that's going to be excellent. What I'll just do is deconstruct this, keep the rest of the freezer room open over here. It's going to be incredibly convenient. Now, we don't want to cook in a room that's bloody. So what actually I'm going to do is right now, preemptively, I'm going to move the butcher table in here. Now, it's going to be a cold room, which means butchering is going to be slow. A little slower because it's not the ideal temperature. I don't think that represents a huge problem. But what's important is that the butcher's table, with its un inherent uncleanliness of minus 15, plus all the blood it leaves behind, I want to make sure... There we go. There's the recruitment just triggered properly. I'm going to make this not a prisoner room. Paolo can claim that as his own bedroom for later. It's going to be annoying because people are going to keep walking through his room, but deal with it. There you go. Paolo's part of our group. Let's give him the same sort of priorities I like to do. Set a one to all these. And... Okay, I'm going to change these cooking rules. Everyone had been set to a one right now because I wanted everyone to be able to butcher since it doesn't really matter. But I don't want them to work at the stove. Now, I could still keep everyone's cooking maxed out. And then at the stove, I can put in a job like, hey, make me some simple meals. But I could say, under details, I could say only Paolo is allowed to cook. Or I could say, listen, anyone can cook, but they have to have a skill of at least five. Now, you do this as a per recipe thing. So if you have two bills, you'd have to set this on both of them. So if I did this, if I left everyone at cooking at a one, but with a simple meal required a skill of at least five, only Paolo would still cook. But everyone would be available to, bu to butcher or make kibble if I had a kibble making job um, at the butcher's table or whatever. Um, however, I think I can probably just go and do something like this. I'm going to put Paolo's cooking at a two because I'm using two as the, this is the primary task that they're here for. And then three for things I'm okay with them all also doing. Like, hey, you know what? He's got some passion for crafting. If for some reason there's nothing to cook, he can craft. Now, technically in this situation, I could put cooking at a three and the same thing would happen because you always work from left to right. So it would do cooking first and then these. But I'm going to set it at a two just because that's what I, I'm going for. People... If there's, a, if there's a better meal, if the, actually, if there's basically any meals available, they will eat that before nutrient paste. So um, if I start making survival meals, I think people will eat that before nutrient paste. So I am going to want to make sure that we keep some simple meals around so that people will eat that first. Plus, nutrient paste, people hate eating that. It gives them that minus four debuff, right, for 24 hours. If we give them simple meals, they won't have any debuffs whatsoever. So 
that's great. I'll say a do until you have X and we'll keep a certain amount of simple meals around. How many? It depends on how consistently your food sources are happening and various things like that. Um, I would probably aim at a minimum, like a bare minimum, two per people. But they eat, they eat often enough, you probably want more than that. In practice, I usually target like a minimum of about five meals per people. So in this case, for example, I might want to do something like, let's try to keep 25 simple meals around. So if there's fewer than 25 meals, Paolo will cook. If there's 25 or more, he will stop. You can, under details, also do this pause until satisfied and put some numbers. So what this would do is Paolo would cook until there was 25 or more simple meals, then stop and only start up again when it goes below 20. In practice, there's not much of a difference in the behavior, but that's something you can consider over here if you want. So I will have him do that. Um, I'd also actually quite like for him to make fine meals. Fine meals will actually give us a positive mood buff. So as long, if we have both vegetable and meat, we can make some very nice fine meals and that's gonna be great. So I'm also gonna say, do until you have X, where X is 25. Now, here's the thing. Right now, what is gonna happen is Paolo's gonna cook until there's 25 fine meals and then we'll start cooking simple meals until there's 25 of those. I don't really need both. If we can make fine meals, I don't need simple meals around. So under cook simple meals, I'm gonna hit details over here and I'm gonna do something that I apparently cannot do without mods. So never mind, ignore me. Um, a lot of times what I used to do, and in fact, I might still do is something like this, like do fine meals forever. And then once you can no longer do five uh, fine meals, keep a little buffer of simple meals. That way, if I end up with say only potatoes, I can't make fine meals. He'll just make a few simple meals and keep it around. In this case, I don't wanna use everything up because it's actually gonna be very important for us to um, make some survival meals. So I'm just gonna give him the job for fine meals. And I'm gonna say, keep like 10 simple meals around. Just in case we can't make simple meals, we'll have some, or in case we can't make fine meals, we're gonna have Paolo make some simple meals for us. Speaking of, where is he? Oh, he's asleep. Okay, sure, fine. Now he's not a night owl, so I will give him the same schedule as my standard non-night owls like that. And then when he wakes up, I'm gonna wake him up now. I'm just gonna draft and undraft him. We're gonna force him awake. He's gonna start cooking. So you see here, he's grabbing uh, some potatoes and some meat, and he's gonna make fine meals for us, which will get stored here. I'm gonna ask for this nutrient paste dispenser and all these hoppers to be deconstructed. I'm just gonna use this tool over here to deconstruct all those. So fob, there you go. It's gonna start working on that right away. Now that's gonna pop open our freezer. So as soon as that's gone, I'm gonna ask for these walls to get built. And remember, construction is a higher priority than deconstruction. So they'll rebuild the walls right away, then go back and deconstruct those. And what I'm going to do is I'm gonna remove that stockpile and take this one and properly expand it to fill this area. There we go. And our meals should get stored over here. In fact, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take the stove and I'm gonna move it right there. And I'm also gonna give Paolo a chair because he's gonna spend a lot of time here and I want him to be comfortable. I'm gonna let him finish this job. Okay. And then I'm gonna tell Fob, hey, yeah, see Paolo's still got this reserved. I'm just gonna recruit Paolo for a moment. Fob, please move this, and then I'm gonna unrecruit Paolo. There we go. Get that moved right away. Thanks. And Paolo is like, oh, I can't cook. I guess I'll craft. But as soon as he's done this, he should go back to cooking. No, I guess he's still thinking he's got it. He's locked in on this. So I'm just gonna reset him with a recruit, unrecruit. There we go. Start cooking, please. Perfect. And we got a research for package survival meals. Great. So I'm gonna put our research back to microelectronics. So in here, we can create a job for package survival meals right there. Oh, wait, do we have the times fours right out of the box? Oh, I didn't realize, I was ignoring that. I didn't realize this was built into RimWorld now. Oh, that's so much handier. Don't make one meal at a time. Make them in, in batches. I'm running with no mods, right? Did they have this in the base game? Ah, fine meals, simple meals. Survival meals. The reason, oh, we need a cooking skill of eight to make a survival meal. Now, so Paolo doesn't have it, but he's damn close because he's a seven with double passion. It is going to take him a little while. Maybe we do need pemmican. Ooh, because we only have a, we have a time limit to rescue Darcy. Anyway, I'm going to go with a do for a, a do until X again. 
But this is better, because what's going to happen, Paolo's going to grab enough food to make four of these at a time. It's going to minimize how much walking he has to do. I'm going to keep, like, 20 survival meals around. So he's just going to reorganize this. But then, yeah, he's going to grab enough to do all four of them at the same time. It's going to save some walking. One of the things that's happening right now is every time this door opens, we're losing some of the, the cooling in this room. So it gets a little bit warmer. And it makes this room cooler, which might not be what we want. What we want to do is we really want to get in the airlock here. So let me show you how we can do that. Let me reinstall the butchering cable just a little off this side. Bob, could you come and do this for me, please? Uh, Prior is working on this. Cheers, thanks. So what we want is we want there to be two doors to get through to come in and out of this room uh, with a gap in between, ideally. And that will prevent temperature from leaking through all over the place. So what we want is a door here and a door here, and we actually want to get rid of the old door in the middle. Now, because diagonals count as being sealed, we actually don't need more walls. This will work as an airlock as is. It'll look a little funny. Normally, I don't do that. Normally, when I build an airlock, I have, you know, like, we have a room here. Um, room here. And then I have another room over here, let's say. And what I do is I actually build, like, eh, let me change this. It'll be a little bit easier to see. There you go. I actually build something that looks kind of like this. Take that out and go doors like this. This looks like a proper airlock. But we're going to we're going to be building something that works exactly the same way by abusing abusing the fact that diagonals count as intact stuff. So fob shouldn't have any of the construction job. There we go. Should work on both doors. And then we'll deconstruct the one in the middle. There we go. So it's going to take Paolo a little bit longer to get from one room to the other. But it is going to stop the temperature leak a little bit. The other thing we might want is there's a variety of different ways we can change this layout to prevent, um, to, to minimize how often things come in and out of this room. But still, this is going to help maintain the temperature a wee bit. Next thing, we do want to increase the cleanliness of this room, so I should really go and put some flooring down. So I'm going to do that. How are we on stone? We got lots of limestone? All right, let's put down limestone tiles. Now, limestone... It's quite a lot stronger than wood. And so we actually might preferentially use the limestone to do like our outer walls for the fences, for example. Um, but the stone tiles tend to be prettier than the uh, wood tiles. So you can see the limestone tile has a beauty of one. And I think much to my chagrin, wood floors don't have a beauty bonus, which annoys me because I think wood floors are very beautiful and I think they should have a beauty bonus, but that's just me apparently. These are, these are rough wood floors, right? kind of rough cut planks, you know, it's not, it's not a, it's not a pretty solid wood flooring or anything. And that, that's the idea. So they're very rustic looking, but I really like the wooden stuff. Um, so using the stone tiles is good because it adds extra beauty. The other advantage is that stone, sorry, I meant, I don't know if I said it right. The advantage to stone tiles is they add extra beauty over the wooden ones. The other thing is that stone is not flammable. Wooden tiles and wooden walls can burn quite easily. In fact, stone walls and stone floor do not burn. So ideally, you want all your stuff to be made out of stone because it's so much safer. You can also make walls and floors out of steel. Now, steel walls, even though you might not think it, do have a slight flammability in the game. And the reason is, I think, because they're not, I don't think they're solid stone. I think they're, you know, or sorry, they're not solid steel. I, I like to think of them as they're like steel, like plates on top of maybe like a wooden core or or something like that or maybe it's just that steel can melt or something like that i think steel has um so wooden walls i think is 100 percent flammable i think steel walls have 35 percent flammability and stone is zero so ideally you make your whole base out of stone so that fire doesn't spread but at the same time wood is really easy to get lots of and i think the wood is pretty we have a manhunter pack of cats oh so Scaria is a disease that will sometimes cause these packs of manhunting animals to come into the map. There's two ways to deal with manhunting packs. One way is you can just lock yourself in a building. The manhunters will not come through walls. So if we were to go and let this door be closed. Now, this door is being held open. I can toggle that off, but it won't close on its own. We actually need someone to walk through that door. Honey, I'm going to recruit you for a sec. Where's Paulo? Okay, he's inside. That's good. Everyone's inside. Honey, I'm going to get you to walk out and then walk back in, and it's gonna reset the door. There we go, so now the door will close, and I'm gonna forbid the door. There, no one's allowed to use this door. So now no one will go out and be eaten by manhunting cats. 
The other thing we could do is we should just go out there and shoot them because the cats aren't terrifying. Um, they can't, these, these crazed animals can close in on you quite quickly and can do a surprising amount of damage. We might lose some eyeballs, some fingers, that sort of thing. Uh, oh shoot, I forgot there was another door over here. Whoops. I'm gonna forbid that as well. And actually, we've got this one. I forgot about all these doors. That's one way to do it. The other way is you can designate an area. So we can designate an area. Let's say arbitrarily, I will say this area, okay? And then if we go into our schedule, I could tell everyone, listen, only hang out in area number one. And that's the other way you can restrict people to a particular area. In this case, I think it's gonna be quite convenient to just lock our doors so no one's allowed outside of our base. No one's gonna be attacked by manhunting cats, although they'll be loud and annoying. The manhunted manhunting creatures here, they are infected with Scaria. When they die, they have a 50-50 chance of instantly rotting. So if you get attacked by a large pack of these animals and you're wondering why their bodies rot instantly, it's because of the Scaria. Eventually, these guys will die or leave the map on their own. So we just have to wait out these cats. One of the nice things with having such a large walled-in area, we have a lot of room to work. Um, you know, we can't mine much from inside of here, although we've got some more material there we could mine. But we've got access to wood, we've got access to food. I'm not too concerned. Meanwhile, Paolo is still cooking away. You can take a look. He's done making all the fine meals. Great. He's going to make a few of these simple meals that we're just going to keep around as a bit of a buffer. And then he's going to start making packaged meals. And then we're going to have to send out a caravan, which actually I think is going to mean we're going to have to deal with the cats because the cats are going to be out there when our caravan tries to go away. I'm going to build... I want to get a machining bench, but we need some more power for that. So I'm going to go ahead and build a second wind turbine. I'm going to build it here. And what I'm also going to do is put down some new farm fields because that way it'll keep those areas free of trees that would block the turbines. It's, uh, 10 by 7 on the one side. I think it's a 6 by 7 on the other. Might be 5. Yeah, 6 by 7. There we go. So a little bit of an awkward little growing zone. So what are we going to do? We've got lots of potatoes. Got a little bit of rice over here. Um, I think I'm going to want to keep a steady food supply. I'm going to make a corn place because as discussed corn gives you a lot of nutrition per harvest but it does take a long time to go through uh, in fact there might even be enough time in the season left how long does it take corn to grow uh 11 days okay yeah no we'll have a corn harvest before winter that's good and then let's grow a little bit of um heel root which we'll need a high plant skill but at some point, we'll get it. it. Even if no one can grow the plants here, it will still prevent trees from growing there. And then I'll, I'll ask for a little bit more heal root there. Heal root gives you herbal medicine. So it's not, as, herbal medicine's not as good as proper medicine, but it's easier to grow, assuming you've got any skill. But the big thing is, I just want to get a little bit of extra wind power. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do this. The downside is if something happens to this wind turbine, we're not gonna be able to get the power from there. So I'll probably wanna route the power another way later on, but for now it's going to save some some material and time. And we're going to get a second battery in here as well. I just want to stabilize the power because the machining table will eat up more power as well. And also come winter, we're going to want more, um, more power to run our heaters. Okay. Paolo should hopefully start to make... Oh no, he doesn't have the skill for the, uh, the package meals yet. That's right. How close is he to level 8? Okay, I'm gonna tell you cook fine meals forever, for now. I'm gonna reset you. This is just gonna train your cooking. But I'm gonna let the microelectronics finish, but I might research pemmican after, just because we may need it. I guess we need, I think we need the meat for the pemmican, so we actually might go through all of it doing this, but we'll see, we'll see. Um, there's no harm, in a sense, of like cooking all the meals ahead of time. Um, you know, because like the raw food doesn't do anything for you, so maybe you should turn it on the meals. The one thing is that the more f goods you have around, the more wealth your colony has, the more dangerous the raids become. And cooked meals are worth more than the raw food, so if you cook everything into meals, your colony's wealth will go up, which means your the attacks that come at you will be more dangerous. I don't think that's a major enough concern, especially in the situation we have now, to stress about it. But it was worth, you know, mentioning. Okay, we got a second battery up. Wind turbine not quite up. And right now the wind's not blowing enough to actually charge anything. But we'll deal with that afterwards. I think I want a light in the freezer here. These cats. Such a horrendous noise, isn't it? 
So terrible. Sleeping through the night, except for Honey, who's planting. Honey might need the m most warm clothes because in the winter at night, it's going to be colder. I mean, it's always cooler at night than during the day. And so it might be, she might be the one person who wants a parka. What I could consider doing just in case, yeah, we still don't have enough dusters. I could at the bottom of all this, add a bill the same way to make parkas. Um, do until you have X where X is one. And again, we'll just monitor the hit points. So if you've got, so everyone must have good pants because there's a perfectly good pair of pants sitting around and no one's equipped that because it's sitting in here. Uh, but new shirts, new dusters might be required. And then after that's all done, maybe we'll make a parka. And then if people start equipping it, then we'll do that. We might even want to do a one-time job with the parkas and just say, listen, just make five. And then, you know, we'll have them available. We can always sell them in the spring if it turns out we don't need it. I'm going to research pemmican in case we need that. But I'm really hoping Paolo can make level eight. In cooking. Double passion. He does learn it pretty quickly. It's mostly a question of how much material we have. And if we have to leave the compound to go hunting, we're going to have to deal with the cats. Uh, do we have weapons? Well, not much. He's nimble. He does dodge and melee. So tell you what, you know what I'm going to do? Plus, Paolo's our, our chef. We'll give him a knife. It seems very appropriate. Um, that way, if he's in melee, he's going to at least be dodging things while he's knifing stuff. And Vort, Vort is got a melee or a range thing, so we'll do that. So we got three mailers, or sorry, three range people, one melee, and then Honey is the pacifist again. Or still, I should say. Yeah, we might need to uh, get a little bit more going on here. This guy just going for a walk. Okay, that's fine. You know what? Let's hunt these alpacas. Since they're within our borders here. Yeah. Keep a supply of meat coming in, either for cooking our meals, or maybe we'll make some pemmican out of it. The research for that at least will go quite quickly. So what I'm going to want to do now that I have microelectronics, I'm going to want to build the high-tech research bench. It works a lot faster, and a lot of tech can't be researched without one. But we're going to we're going to want to expand. We're going to have to some, get some extra buildings going on. I think we're going to make a new dumping stockpile here. Let me copy these settings, paste them over there. I'm going to remove that so things will get moved over because I think I'm going to want more buildings over here. Always expanding. Da -da. Oh, I need to make sure there is nothing under the door. We don't want anything stored under the door, otherwise it gets jammed open. And yeah, this looks a little silly, but I'm pretty sure it works. Okay, it looks a lot silly, but I'm pretty sure it works. We are going to want to floor the rest of our rooms over here, too, because right now we're generating dirt and we're being raided. Now, that's interesting because are the cats still on the map? They're currently asleep. But they should fight each other. So we're sort of solving one problem with another problem here. I'm gonna unforbid all these doors. Wake everyone up. Get them ready for some battle here. Fire. Ugh, it's annoying. Don't set things on fire. It's very rude. Okay, we're in position. Here comes Crow, the one who set things on fire. Excellent. I think these guys might still be hunting the cats. Yeah. <laughs> The manhunt. It's, it's interesting the cats aren't attacking these. Usually they would. The manhunters will go after the raiders. But still, I'm not going to complain about this timing. And actually, splitting up the raiders like this is quite convenient because we only had to fight one at a time. Oh my god, it's taking them forever. They must be really incompetent. I mean, they're only using bows. And yeah, they're not terribly good at using them either. We need some extra um, graves. Hallow's only got a melee weapon. We might want to send them out. I'm going to do a little bit of a flanky here. Try to take Borbra from the side. Just 
Listen, Vort, could you shoot? Oh, you're out of range. I move you up. I want you to shoot this person. There you go. So we don't accidentally shoot Paolo. So this person's just trying to whack Paolo with a bow. Paolo's taking damage, but it should just be bruises. Yeah. Oh, he's got some dirt in his eye. Wow, I didn't know they could do that. Dirty fighting. Wow. There we go. They are going to try to retreat. What I'm going to do is just get a little closer here. Oh, all right. Everyone's down, and no one survived, so no prisoners. Huh. All right, we're going to unforbid. I suppose I could do the right-click, allow everything on the map. Okay. Well, that's not so bad. Let me go into miscellaneous here. I'm going to make some graves uh, outside the base. We only have one extra grave left inside the base. There you go, Fob. Thank you for doing that. And then we'll get these people buried. Oh. What was that? Was that shooting? Oh, you're still hunting the alpacas. Okay. Whew. No, that's fine. I was a little bit panicked. Bob well, doing a little bit of repairs here. The hunting is a way to, like, continuously train your shooting. So it's not too bad. Palo, yeah. Did take a little bit of bruising. It's not a big deal. Oh, we have some marble. Let's use some marble blocks for our floors here. Since... Marble's not as strong. It's actually the softest of all metal, or of all stone, but it really doesn't matter for flooring jobs because floors don't really have hit points. Like, no one attacks the floor. There you go. I don't know if we have enough marble blocks for all that, but we'll go and uh, at least designate this and see what happens afterwards. What I could do at my stone cuttings table, I could put the marble up a little bit higher and prioritize marble for beauty for a little bit. Okay. I'm going to get you to butcher immediately, please. Now, one of the things we might want to do is we might keep Kiwi out of our freezer here because Kiwi's probably going to eat some more meals. I'm not going to worry about it too much because it's just one animal, but that is something you can consider uh, organizing later on. Who's our best chatter? It's Honey. Where's this caravan going? Oh, they're setting up over there. All right, that's fine. Who's got the question mark right here? Vulture. Let's have a little chat with you and see what kind of trading we can do maybe. Hello. Um, I'm going to sell you this wooden club and a short bow, and we'll sell some of this clothing and this helmet. Is there anything we want to buy from you? Well, maybe we'll buy some pemmican. And that way we can go on our, there we go, we can go on our caravan right now. Because I really want to do that this episode. But apparently it's not going to happen because we're 33 minutes in. Damn, that's a shame. Well, maybe we'll set it up and then we'll see how to actually deal with it next time. That's not a terrible idea. I think we're going to leave Paolo behind because he's slightly injured. We're going to leave Honey behind because uh, Honey is a pacifist. We'll bring Fob, Sky, and Vort with us. So, how do we do a caravan? Well, we go to the world. We click on our base over here. All right, that's us. We click Form Caravan. And we tell it where we're going to want to go. We're going to want to go to this prisoner camp. So it's going to take us about a day to get there. And we'll be able to forge some things along the way. So we click accept and then we say who we want to bring. So we're going to bring Fob, Sky, and Vort. Uh, we could bring a pack animal with us uh, if we were carrying a lot of stuff. But we're not carrying a bunch of stuff. We're not doing a trade caravan. So we're not going to bother doing that. And we can't ride the cows. So it won't help us get us there any faster. Uh, we could choose some items to bring with us. This is mostly if we're doing a trade caravan, but we're not. And then we want to check travel supplies. Now, by default, the game will try to bring an appropriate amount of stuff with us. Now, here's the thing. I was all stressed about getting um, uh, the... Did I buy venison? Oh, you know what? I bet you the pemmican's not in the storage, which is why I can't bring it. Because it's such a short trip, so some of these will rot. So the fine meals will rot in 2.7 days. But it's, it's the trip is less than a day to get there. I really don't have to worry about having had my packaged survival meals and stuff, but I was trying to showcase it. But now that we went through the process of here's how you can get to it, but we don't actually need it because this is not going to rot for 2.7 days. We should be able to make the round trip in time. That's going to be all right. So it tries to grab an appropriate amount of food for the number of people you're going with and a little bit of medicine. So if I hit send, you get a warning. Oh, that's not a lot of food. No, that's okay. Our, our trip is short. That's all right. 
You'll see these three have a little signpost. That means they're getting ready to go in the caravan. You can specify where your caravan's organized as well. So the caravan hitching post. It's usually convenient to have it relatively near your stockpile because this is where they're going to set up. This is also where they're going to grab the animals. They're going to grab animals out of your pen if you're bringing animals. They'll tie them up over here. They'll load up their saddlebags and do all that. So we'll put that location. That's going to be okay. But there you go. It's not going to take long to set up because all they had to do is grab some food and they're now leaving the map. Actually, maybe I can just keep going with the episode. And then if I check the world view, our little caravan is this little yellow dot. Ugh, they immediately went to rest. That admittedly is my fault. Why is there a fire? Admittedly, that was my fault. I probably should have waited for them to sleep. So there's a fire just outside our walls. Okay, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to mark... So, you only fight fires and only get warnings about it if it's inside your home zone. What I'm going to do is I'm going to mark this whole area as a home zone. That way, and Honey and Paolo, I'm going to recruit and unrecruit you. So you reevaluate your jobs because firefighting is number one priority. So they're going to go out over here and try to fight the fire. And I want to make sure it goes out because otherwise it'll keep spreading back to the wall over and over. So I'm going to go and do that. Now, fires indoors are extremely dangerous. Outdoor fires usually aren't too much of a problem, although if they're too big, sometimes you can never get ahead of them. Indoor fires are bad because it gets really, really hot indoors if there's a fire. There we go. Now that that's done, I'm going to remove this extra home zone because I don't want anyone to bother cleaning that area. That would be a waste of time. Yeah, are people still sleeping here? That's, that's my bad. I should have let them... I should have just planned it for the morning, but I was like, oh, I can squeeze it in before the end of the episode. And then they're sleeping in the wilds and they don't even have any bedrolls. Bedrolls are something you can construct under furniture here. You can construct bedrolls and you just plop them down sort of on the floor to start off with. You can build them anywhere. And then after they're built... Here, I'll get... You know, three, the four is plenty. Let's go four. Um, I don't need some for everyone. After they're built, what you do is you use the button here that says uninstall. What that will do is that will package up your furniture, Ikea style, and put it in your stockpile. So you can sleep in bedrolls like a regular bed, but if you go and uninstall them, they sit in your stockpile, and then you can bring them with you when you're doing caravans like this. And then your people, when they sleep on the way somewhere, they don't sleep on the ground. Hey, if the trade caravan is leaving. They left us a gift. One unit of Glitter World Medicine. This is super good medicine. Super duper good medicine. I don't like that there's a bunch of stuff sitting outside. Paolo. I'm not sure fine for now. I'm going to... I'm going to give you a whole one. I'm going to bring your bread rest down by one level. There you go. So you'll actually prioritize do some hauling, which will include burying some people. I'm just going to temporarily get Paolo to do a little bit of hauling for us. Okay. Sky's caravan is approaching the prisoner camp. Yeah, we're going to keep going. Boop, 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 boop. Get in there. Excellent. Okay. So we have now arrived at this prisoner camp. So I can still click over here and see my people. But now if I click on these guys, I'm on a brand new map. This is a prisoner camp. There's Darcy. We're here to rescue Darcy. Hopefully she's not a terrible person. Well... That's not ideal, but all right, we've committed. I mean, it's uh, it's Vort's sister. We have to save her, even if she's a terrible person. So our people here are all drafted, and we're going to have to go and kill Cardi here, who's who's got a pistol. Luckily, that's not a weapon I'm super scared of. Move over. Try to get in position. Um, we actually should be able to outrange her. Pistol doesn't have huge range. Oh, look at this. If we actually back up a little with Sky. Oh, did you really seriously hit me? Oh, I think it was deflected off armor. We can shoot her. Admittedly, not with everything. She can't shoot us. Although Sky's not doing a great job. Oh, she's moving back. All right, you know what? We'll just move up here. Actually, if she's not in cover... Sneak up a little bit more. Quickly take her out. Nice. Nice! Okay, I think that was the only defender. Yeah, so area is now safe. So what we can do is we can walk into buildings uh, now if we want. You'll see I can't actually tell my people to go in here. They can tell them to attack a door, but I can't tell them to go into the buildings. I can fix that quite easily by doing this. If I go into architect orders, 
because there's no threats here, I can now claim all these structures as my own. I can say, listen, all your buildings are belong to us. And now my people can actually walk into these buildings. So don't have vision for what's inside them. But yeah, we can we can walk inside these and they will be revealed. Ta-da! Like that. The other thing I can do is there's a bunch of stuff that's forbidden over here. Well, I can allow everything. Like that. I can also deconstruct. What I'm going to do is I'm going to tell all my people here to have construction as a number one priority. I'm going to deconstruct the solar generator because we're going to get some cool materials out of that. Uh, these are just normal quality beds. I don't think they're worth worrying about. But maybe I'll deconstruct the fire foam popper, this lamp, this lamp as well. Because we might get some components out of it. I'm not sure. I'm also going to go and claim everything now that I can see inside of this. So I'm going to unrecruit everyone. Everyone's got construction as number one priority, although they might grab some meals. Oh, I can deconstruct this lamp as well. There you go. They're going to go and deconstruct some stuff, get some metal, maybe some components. I'm not sure. Okay. Now, do we actually capture? Oh, free prisoner. There we go. Oh, I should have Vort do it. Vort, go free your sister. Yay! And the rescue joined us. Hooray! Darcy is now part of our group. Actually, there's a bedroll over here. Let's, uh... Oh, sorry. Not deconstruct. We want to uninstall. Because this will turn into something portable, and we can bring a bedroll with us now. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to go to World. So, over at this prisoner camp, I can reform the caravan. And tell it where I want it to go. And then, I'm going to bring all four people with me, including Darcy... I'm going to grab uh, this component, all this steel, this jade, this plasteel. Notice I do have a maximum mass I can bring with me. And the more we have, the slower we go as well. I'm not going to bring these blocks and chunks. I'm not going to bring a dead body. I'll grab the auto pistol. I'm not going to grab any of these. And then travel supply. Let's bring this meat. Uh, no, it's going to be close. We could bring it with us. It might rot along the way. I'll bring the vegetables, not the meat. And the berries should be okay. And we'll bring the bedroll with us as well. And there we go. We do this. And the caravan is now on its way back home. And there we go. We have successfully raided a site on the map. There's lots of things we can do on the map. We'll get news sometimes that there'll be like work camps nearby. We could go and raid those if we wanted to. We can visit these towns like here and we can trade. I don't know. I've never attacked a proper outpost like this. I actually don't know what's involved in that. I have like well over a thousand hours in RimWorld. I've never done that. So I don't know what happens if you visit an actual hostile town. But I can make a trade caravan and go over there. One of the things, if a merchant comes to you, anything you try to sell to that merchant, you only get a fraction of the value of the good that you sell to the merchant. But if you make a caravan that goes somewhere else, you can sell things for the full value. Also, there will be more stuff to buy and more silver because you're visiting someone's house, not just on whatever they brought for you. Um, and so trade caravans can be quite valuable, especially if you have a bunch of pack animals so you can bring extra weight. And also if you can have animals that you can ride because you can go a lot faster that way. So it can be quite lucrative to do that sort of thing. I don't do it very often just because it's just not the way I play. But I probably should. I, I, there's no probably. I, I definitely should do those a lot more often. But there we are. Nice successful mission. So we're going to put a cut in here. I'm not sure that we've covered a lot of stuff at this point. Um, I, there's a more I'd like to do. I'm actually enjoying this playthrough quite a lot. Um, I do have a pretty full schedule with a lot of other games. At this moment, I'm not going to 100% guarantee that this uh, series is going to continue. We're going to, again, I haven't posted a single video for this yet. I'll keep an eye out for comments if people have extra questions and things like that. And generally, just take a look at those view numbers. So, of course, do make sure to, you know, hit like and comment and favorite and share and, and all those things. Uh, because, you know, if, uh, if the video is getting good attention, then I'm going to make more of this. Otherwise, I got tons of other RimWorld Let's Plays on my channel you can check out. A lot of them will be heavily modded and have you know, various themes. This was not only vanilla in terms of the uh, the mods, but also in theme. This is just, you know, sort of a generic -y kind of game. Um, the ideology system from the ideology expansion really contributes a lot to having thematic Let's Plays because the ideology system lets you make people who are pacifists or animal lovers or raiding cannibals or technologists or this or that or many 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 other things in between uh and it has led to some very 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 interesting gameplay so uh if you are new to the channel i do hope you check that out and yeah again do, do those thumbs up leave the comments let me know if you're interested and hopefully we get enough attention and i'll just keep this going because i love rimworld thanks for watching folks i'll see you next time bye bye